thank you ever so much. I am humbled considering all the prestigious gen gentlemen and ladies who preceded me. Dr. Rampal, I am so glad to know you're working on aging hearts. <laughs> I have something to look forward to. Um, I'm an aging diabetic, and the kid you saw in the video with me, that's my great-grandson, Zakai. And 20 minutes with him is a cardiovascular nightmare. And I love him to pieces, and he's born on my birthday. My granddaughter hooked that up so I wouldn't be so mad at her for not finishing her college degree before she had a child. But people move at their own speed, and thank God, she's a brilliant, brilliant um, graduate now and a mother, and she needed to do this. And um, the baby's daddy is now her husband. So everything and <laughs> <laughs> Everything has ended beautifully. So as a grandfather, I need not worry. Part of my joy and my loves in life is moving to the positive place. I cannot abide victims and negative bearers. Yes, a lot of negative things happen in life. There's always some drama waiting around the corner. You could be the best driver in the world, somebody's come and hit, and hit you, you know. Um, but I believe in the positive things in life. And I learned that right here in Jamaica. Donovan and I were talking last night and we both had tough, tough, tough daddies. Young people here, tough daddies and tough mommies and tough grandparents, they're the best thing God could ever give to you. <laughs> And how I see the world, it could be God, Moses, or Muhammad. You decide who your superlative being is. But I hope you believe in some kind of superlative being because it could help guide and nourish you some more if you do. Anyway, my daddy was tough as nails. I thought he was the most impossible man as a teenager growing up. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go to parties. I just I had to study, study, study. And he was an Oxford man and chief education officer here in Jamaica. And I wasn't seeing the academic thing too tough. <laughs> um, I wanted to dance. This wonderful, wonderful, superlative Jamaican woman, Ivy Baxter, was my teacher in high school, and she got me involved in dance. Had no significant interest in the form, but I knew the dance company members kept catching the plane and flying away to some other city in the world. And they wore the most beautiful clothes in Kingston. So for stupid, selfish reasons, I said, oh, I'd like to do that, you know. Um, and Ivy came to see us perform in Buffalo, in New York, and she just nourished me so well, as did all the members of the company, including Buddy Puyat, who served me breakfast today, that was to die for. I can't solve this and what have you. Anyway, when in 1973, I brought the company home to Jamaica, and I warned them that dad might not come to the show because he doesn't want me to do this. He wants me to do something more academic. And I called him, I said, Dad, I'm here. I'm staying at the Wyndham. Um, that meant I wasn't staying at home. Um, my company's here, I reserved a box for you. Show is at eight o'clock, hope you can make it. And I was 33, so I was grown, <laughs> big grown, I knew everything. And um, he showed up with seven people, came backstage, sweetness and light. My son, the choreographer, what a wonderful show. And my dancers are looking at me and saying, you said your dad was so tough. What a lovely man. <laughs> and he fessed up right there and then that had I told him 
that my work would have intellectual stamina and cultural significance, he never would have fought me as hard as he did. Amen. And because Dr. Rampal wasn't around the next year, and he was diabetic too, he died from a stroke the very next year. And I never knew why I was so driven to bring the company home to Jamaica. Because if I hadn't brought them home, I would never have known that I'd done something that was good enough for my father. And since then, thank God, I've got 14 honorary doctor degrees. So I'm doctor, 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 <laughs> Pagan. <laughs> From some of the most prestigious institutions in the world. So dad can rest in peace. I did good. <laughs> Um, we can get pleasure, and we love pleasure, but how about a little thought about what we're going to do next week, mo next month, next year, next 10 years, next 20 years, you know. How about that? And how about some things that we don't quite understand, but if we saw the painting again, Albert Huey, my teacher in art, wonderful man, passed on Jamaican. Good. If, um, if you saw the piece again, if you looked at the art again, if you heard the song again, if you heard the composition again, you'll get it. Great things you don't absolutely get in one fell swoop. Dr. Rampal just didn't get up and spend 20 minutes or 20 days uh, on, on getting his heart magistry done. He worked at it and had colleagues and worked and worked and refined and experimented and refined and experimented. And in choreography, <clears throat> my canvas is a human being. And I worship and adore my dancers and I have several graduates from the Michael Manley School who have performed with me, won Bessie Awards, and so we have great training here in Jamaica. Um, so if they don't dance with NDTC and they come and dance with me, still more exposure. And in my contract, Disney recruits for Lion King dancers in Jamaica. <laughs> so they're in all the shows around the world representing Jamaica, and we haven't had one bad egg out of 40, 50 dancers. I mean, just really exceptionally trained people, physically, spiritually, and intellectually. And great dancers need those three things. <laughs> there are some dancers who are physically hip and physically good, but there's nobody home. <laughs> and when you sit in the audience, you don't get it, you don't feel it, you're not interested. They're just doing, you know, shake dancer. That's okay, okay? But you're not getting anything deeper or anything more subtle or anything more experiential. So the dancers we've gotten from, and the ones who dance here still, thank God, and Re Rex can sing Hosanna that the company is still going on beautifully after his passing. <clears throat> and I saw them recently in Canada performing and they were exceptional. So we have a lot of things to be proud of as Jamaicans and as superb human beings. But I work very hard at my choreography. My, my grandkids and grandpa choreograph, in other words, leave him alone. We're not gonna bump all over the place today. Um, you're gonna eat what I put before you. We're not gonna go through all of that because I'm involved in a deep process. And if I don't focus on what I'm doing, the muses will get up and fly out of the room and leave you there. And you have, I have deadlines around the world as to when I have to open which pieces, which companies. And um, I'll get there. And I will not 
make it to the finish line like Donovan Bailey. <laughs> and I can tell you how Atlanta erupted when he won that race. And as to his successor, Mr. Bowles, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> um, wow, wow, Jamaican born and bred. Excellence, worked hard to achieve, chiseled, buffed, experimentalism, certainly experimentalism. When I start a new dance, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. I have some ideas. And idea one, mm -mm. idea two, mm -mm. idea 20, mm -mm. Um, someplace around idea 21, something starts happening. And then I have to put my fingers to the bone. And because of all of this good Jamaican food y'all force on me, <laughs> and because of loving French wine, my schoolboy figure is gone. <laughs> and, <laughs> So I can't do all the things I used to do, but now I have Nord Pennewell um, and Natalie Rogers as my assistants, and they were my assistants in Lion King, and they're rehearsal directors in my company, and they're family. So I can show them the movement two times, and then <gasps> heart, good. <laughs> two times, and then I'm, I'm exhausted. But they can take it over and do it five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten times. The biggest joy for me is as we travel around the world, both with my company and with Lion King, we're in countries and we've been all over the world. We've been on every continent except for Antarctica, but we've been in all the other continents. And um, we meet p people, different languages, different cultures, different races, different genders. And when you hear them burst out in applause, even if they don't understand the language, because sometimes we use English, sometimes we use South African, what have you. But that human spirit is touched, it's opened, it's anointed, it's educated. It's given some light. It's given some darkness. Whatever. When they hear that and they applaud and they forget the mortgage that they owe or the problems that they're having with their teenage kids or, <laughs> or whatever is, is or is not going on in their relationships, that I can give them two hours of pleasure to lift them up to show them a different look on a positive life, to show them different journeys taken to get to positive places, then I feel tremendously blessed by all the gods that you could possibly imagine and the gods of the Yoruba, 11 of them and you know, what have you. Um, we've toured all of Africa. We've been North, South, East, West Africa. And that was a joy to hear them. We had to perform on our days off because all the shows were sold out. And I asked the dancers, I said, it's your day off. Union-wise, you gotta have your day off. Would you like to perform for these people who are dying to see you? And every single one said yes. So we put in free performances um, so the world can see and unite and be healed, and be amused, and be delighted, and be uplifted, and be shown what good hard work. Because you got to get in the studio and rehearse, and rehearse, and rehearse, and with me, until you get it right. It's got to be right. That's my daddy in me. And uh, I am shocked to see it come out and bloom sometimes so much. 90% is not good enough scars, you know? <laughs> You've got to do it. And the famous one, D-O-R-G-O. -O. Oh, yeah. um, but I survived it all. It nourished me. Didn't mention my mother because she was a sweetheart. She loved the arts, loved her son, and I could do no wrong. However, whenever I screwed up big time and she said, this one is between you and your father. 
that I knew I was in deep, deep, deep trouble and there was nobody to help me out of that one. So I, I don't want to minimize her by any means, but she supported me, supported me, loved me, nourished me, whereas my daddy was ta 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 ta. So youngsters out there, listen to your parents, and this has been a supreme pleasure for me, and thanks to TEDx, and thanks to Donovan Bailey, and all the people who have spoken today. Keep pushing it, keep pushing it, and enjoy your lives. Thank you. Thank you.